Hope everyone's doing well. So I've been doing great with my eating this week. Uh, it's been one full week to the day. I've been doing great with my exercises. Um, uh, we're gonna go over my bod pod and my DEXA scan results. Uh, the meetings I had with the people that gave me the scans and the information. So uh, it's gonna be informative. Um, it's gonna be, once again, a little on the dry side, but you know, um, the next video I'm gonna be talking more about my day-to-day -day activities and how it's going and more of the detail. So I did these scans on September 1st and I just got around to editing the videos tonight so everyone can go over the numbers with me and what I went through in those uh, meetings I had. So uh, they're pretty interesting numbers and I went over them a little bit in the interview but this way uh, you guys can follow along with the progress that I make. So your resting metabolic rate, which is your body at rest, so it, there is some movement. Basal metabolic rate is no movement, it's just breath. It's what your body needs, the calorie count your body needs to sustain itself without purposeful exercise, exertion of any sort, other than a little bit of movement. That is for you 2,451, give or take. Remember it's an estimate. Everybody's DNA changes up and makes everybody individual. So what that says is you do not go below 2,400 calories a day. Um, activity, when we're talking sedentary, we're still talking about the things that you have to do day in, day out. You have to get up, you have to go to the bathroom, you have to cook your food, you have to go into work. And the biggest thing about the human body is it adapts. So you can get into a program where you're doing um, a high intensity exercise and yeah, it's gonna push you way up. It's gonna put you in the very active, but then the body adapts. And as it adapts, you've gotta bring yourself back down into more of the active or the low active. That's why it's so important to keep things changing up. People that do the same thing day in, day out in their exercise program, they're gonna find that they're just, after a while, they're not gonna move, it's not gonna change. Some people call it muscle memory. See, the, the central nervous system clicks out a little bit. It becomes less challenging to the body. So, your calorie range for sedentary is 3138. That maintains these numbers. For low active, active, very active, and you are definitely going to be going through all of those ranges for the first while, you will hit very active is anywhere from 3,700 up to about 5,100. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the DEXA scan. This is the gold standard for measuring uh, all the information that we normally go with uh, to find body fat and bone density and muscle mass. So this is gonna be a, pretty much as accurate as science can get when it comes to measuring. It's a little bit different on the back side than this scale. But so essentially this is a breakdown of fat mass, lean mass, and bone mass, a nice visualization for us. So you can kind of see the colors there, the purple is the fat mass, orange represents your lean, and blue is your bone, right? Skeleton structure here over here on the left, and then soft tissues over here on the right. Uh, so just nice, nice way for, to first to kind of see it, and then on your second follow, we'll be able to do a comparison study as well and see how that's changing. So if we kind of break down the numbers here, total weight three thirty one, with a total lean mass of one hundred ninety four point two pounds. So lean mass in the body is everything your body is not bone or fat. So it's muscle, water, organ, skin, basically anything you think of. That's gonna be in there. About 58%. Uh, total fat mass currently 128.4 pounds, approximately 39%. Uh, if we include your bone mass in there, it drops it to 38.8. Uh, so in terms of like the most important numbers on the entire report, I think those are two things that we're really gonna focus in on. Percentages are percentages, they'll change over time. It's not really our primary goal. Really, I think what your goal is to see is, what's my lean mass doing, 194.2? What's my fat mass doing, 128.4? and just those are the raw numbers, right? So we're gonna see how those guys change in the next three to four months. So but, how is it gonna be different when we get my arm in the scan compared to this? The arm in the scan, so basically with the left arm being estimated, so we did capture your right entire right arm, right. essentially. So what it, the report does, it takes the right arm and slaps it onto, or has, estimates it as the left side. Okay, that's right? good. So it's so, still being accurate. Yeah, so it's, plus or minus one to three percent, right? Your right and left arm's not gonna be that different where we're gonna see a huge change there, right? Um, so we should be okay. Okay, also does a little bit of a more screening, so long story short, 
just fine. Just fine. More, more than enough. What's not acceptable and what's uh, uh, negative one? Excellent. Anything I'm less than negative one on your T and Z scores, um, you're sitting at three point three, like T and Z, so like way above, way above. Really? In terms of relative normal. Yep. That's odd. What? <laughs> what do you? What do you mean? Oh, just uh, I didn't expect a, something that good. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've lost a lot of muscle in the last few years. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, so at the end of the day, too, the way that we do the bone density test here is not really focused on that. So, like, yes. it's more of a screening, right? So, right. bone density testing is usually shooting through the spine, shooting through the hip, right? So, if you're really focused on osteoporosis, osteopenia, I always say, you know, get a test outside, basically, right? Okay. Um, next. So androgenic gynoid, so those are your relative amounts of fat in your waist and hips, right? Uh, Android refers to your waist, hips is gynoid. So currently around your waistline, about 50% of the tissue is fat. Right now on your hips, 32.1. So it's a ratio, it's 1.58 the waist to 1% hip. For males, anything higher than one to one is deemed somewhat problematic, right? It's accumulation of fat around the midsection. It's not a direct, um, measurement of visceral fat or anything like that is just you know, relative amounts of fat there. So it can be associated with, like, you know, sometimes you mentioned like metabolic syndrome, the higher number of fat you have in the area is not ideal. So you can't necessarily do anything to spot reduce in that area, anyways, but dropping our total body fat percentage down will tend to help even this out, anyways. Okay. Uh, earlier, or earlier we mentioned like sarcopenia testing. so. Just a quick screen, underweight individuals, people losing muscle mass, it seems like for no apparent reason or just like very uh, low muscle mass will probably be more relevant to them. I think for our purposes, you're, you're more than fine. Uh, so for males, as a quick screen, anything less than 7.26 would be considered potentially sarcopenia. So you're seeing at 12.59, which is very high. Uh, so tons of muscle there, so no issues whatsoever. Okay, RMR, so this is based off an estimate, right? So there is an equation that is all based off, this one's the same joys right there. And one of the variables is your fat-free mass, right? So that's one of the things that we just measured out. And that's how we're gonna come up with this number, 2,224 calories a day at baseline, right? So that's you doing absolutely nothing. You're already gonna be burning that much. Um, so it really depends what you wanna do with that, right? So I know you're not too, too big on it, okay, like min-maxing your calories in, calories out, and stuff like that, but just as an estimate, um, you can use this to maybe multiply by one of these factors or you just track your exercise per day. So I think for you, it might be a little bit easier where you know your exercise for 15 minutes a day. So, you know, pop that into your MyFitnessPal, have it spit out a number, and let's see where it comes up there. Or you can take this, multiply by one of these factors. So, lightly, yours would be interesting. So total minutes would be 15 minutes times seven, is under five minutes of each. That's not right. Uh, hour and forty-five minutes. Yeah, right? hundred five. Hundred five. So that would be probably in this moderate category, right? Thirty minutes moderate, so that's three five days a week. So one, let's say one point five five, right? Right. One point five five times two 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 four, right? So. Expected energy output, or like baseline, how much exercise you're doing is approximately 3,400 calories per day, right? Okay. So that's what you, it's estimated that your total energy expenditure is. So um, for you to be eating around that 3K, you would technically be at a deficit, but that's how okay. that's basically how you would use it, right? Yeah, I wasn't even expecting to go up to as high as six or more on yeah. some days. Yeah. When I first did this years ago with just no exercise, I had six pounds a day and it's surprisingly from muscle. Yeah, what is six pounds a day? Of ground beef. Ground beef, okay. Yeah, and I, it was like I did a, a month worth of squats. Mm -hmm. my, my quads were thicker, my waist was smaller, and my butt filled up my pants. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite amazing and I hadn't worked out after one week. I yeah, I mean the changes, so you'll, my pants fit. the changes you'll see is pretty remarkable. So, but that's based on three to five days a week of exercise. So if I'm going to seven, so, okay. so, I, so what I kind of did there, because there's no direct correlation or there's no I direct see, fat category, so that's why I did the total minutes. Gotcha. It's not a one-to-one -one probably, but I think that's probably the next best thing. Great. Okay. Yeah.
Um, and then the last part here, Bruno, is the breakdown. So you'll notice some ease here. So those are just the estimates, right? So that's just showing left arm, left leg, left trunk, just parts of their paint weren't able to scan fully into the window. So you'll see the numbers that we were able to scan on the right side is duplicated on over here on the left, right? So in terms of total body composition, I think we're fine, but we're not going to see the left and right differences yeah. as well. Um, but I think this could be useful, still just kind of tracking maybe more your muscle mass changes, um, and as well as kind of seeing where your fat's being stored. So you can kind of see here, pretty much in that midsection, that trunk area, 80.2 pounds over over half of our body fat right now, in that kind of mid torso region. Uh, this is also where most of your lean mass is, 93 pounds. Uh, in the legs, fairly better ratio, 72.5 pounds of lean mass versus only 32.8 pounds of fat, and then the arms is doing its own thing, 20 pounds of muscle and 12 pounds of fat. So on follow-up, I think, you know, if you're doing a lot of focus on legs perhaps, or you're expecting, you know what, we're going to really fill out the legs and build a lot of muscle, we actually be able to see now how much muscle actually we're able to put on there. Uh, so there's a little bit actually more detail for us, but, you know, just more food for thought to see how we did. So to kind of recap, I still think the major values that we really want to focus on are these two numbers, the 194.2 lean mass and the 128.4 fat mass. So. Thanks for watching the video. And if you can subscribe, I'd appreciate it and give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel uh, progress. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this uh, moves along. I think this is going to be a pretty cool challenge.